What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up? Hello. Hello. What's up, people? Welcome. Welcome to Hit The Bid. Hitthebid.com is the website, and if you haven't come to the website to say hello to me, I don't even know what you're doing. Take this moment right now to go to the website, and if you haven't signed up for it, get to the website, because that's where all the magic happens. Right now, I'm going to just give us our brief update of what's been happening in the, in the world of Hitthebid.com. Well, as you know, the HIG trade that set me off into a, uh, a frantic oblivion of psychosis and health problems has come back to uh, us outstand, uh, not outstand, to uh, to baffle and uh, 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 what's some other words? I, I need to I need my thesaurus right here. It's baffling. It's baffling how it's come down to the wire that this Hig trade would have been the greatest trade that we've all could have did. Because let me tell you about. There's a book called the Why the Best Laid Plans Normally Go Wrong. It's because when you plan something out, it makes so much sense. But then when you're in the heat of the moment, you decide something and you alter that plan. The Harvard Financial trade was buying $24 calls and buying $23 puts. But the day of days when we started to make some money on the put side assumed that this would just be a, a stock that came right back and we'd make money on the call side. So we quickly sold the puts. And of course, we watch the stock sell off another five or six points. So what would have happened if we just would have stuck with the plan, which was to give the stock at least two to three weeks, because we had over a month for option, options expiration on this one. We gave ourselves so much time to let see what happens, but we decided to take a shot and get out of the entire lot. Basically traded it as poorly as you possibly could as far as a straddle is concerned. And considering every other straddle worked out, why I decided to get out completely of the put side on the pig was just, it's still beyond me. But we're not talking about the past anymore. What's gonna happen right now is so, I would have made money, okay, on the put side. So now the calls would have been just gravy. And now the calls have come back on this takeover rumor, which is unbelievable. And the fact that Kramer says to sell into any strength on Harvard Financial kind of makes me think that maybe we'll have one or two more days. Now, also basing everything on the matrix and the Max Payne theory. Now, did you realize about eight or nine, maybe 10 days ago, all we had was negative news. The market was about to fall off a cliff. All the doomsdayers were on CNBC. All the reasons that we were going down made so much sense. No volume, blah, blah, blah. They were coming up with everything. We had Iran testing weapons. We had September 11th coming up, million different reasons. And then just like that, Max Payne kicks in. The, the matrix knows that it's caught enough people short, bang, up we go for eight out of nine days. So soon, probably maybe today or tomorrow, they'll come that euphoric stage of this market where you think we're about to break out, where all the guys, all the pumpers will be on CNBC talking about how great everything is and how we are underestimating what the stock market can provide for us in the future. And then we will start going back down just when you think we're gonna start going back up. Now, the only thing about the Max Payne theory is that we're going into September and October. Max Payne theory likes to screw around with stock market almanacs. Now, September and October are notoriously bad months, but based on the Max Payne theory, I'm thinking now we'll probably have a good month because I think the market definitely has changed. Um, to, obviously, we've had our crashes, our flash crashes. We had 2009, which was a coming off the bottom rally, and then 2010 has pretty much tested everybody's willpower to stay in the market. You can't go short, you can't go long, you can't hang on to a position for more than three or four days. But where we are right now is, I think, in a brand new world. So we cannot look back and say September, October are normally bad months, let's get out and wait for the November, December rally. Because every day right now, it's max pain. And right now, I think that we have to wait till the euphoric stage kicks in. The market's like a manic depressant. Wait till it gets really, really high and wait for it to come back down, just like the Yankees did. Okay, and you wanna know why I started selling, <laughs> I was about to say selling short the Yankees. Kind of the reason that 
I figured the Yankees were about to start losing games was that they went on that eight or nine game winning streak. When they didn't look like they were playing so well, they just rolled off eight or nine wins. And then they lost that one game. They were going into, they were going to go playing Baltimore, who's playing great now. And I was suggesting that you start betting against the Yankees again. Forget about the Mets, that's a standard. And we'll get to our NFL picks later tonight because I've got to talk about the Jets. But right now, we are looking at a market that, hey, of course we got to say it wants to go higher, right? But we'll see how it reacts today. We'll see how it closes today. We're loving this Hartford Financial. Maybe it'll keep going up for my benefit, but I seriously doubt that. I'm going to probably be selling out of it today or tomorrow. I have to. All right, so good luck to you. And uh, get to the chat rooms, hit the bid.com. And if this video served no purpose to you whatsoever, the whole thing is get to the website, make some new friends. If I'm not there, we've got plenty of guys that have been hanging out on this website. You guys know who you are. Just say hello and they'll tell you how to just hang out and have some fun. Enjoy yourselves. See ya. I would much prefer Crow.